can just, man, I just want to see another full season from Brandon Lau. That's all yeah. I'm asking. I think it's, I think it's a very easy decision to say yes. If he were to duplicate what he did and he's not blocking anybody. You are locked on Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Rays, your daily podcast covering everything Tampa Bay Rays. From game analysis to player interviews, we've got you covered with all the latest news and insights. My name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. Bringing you expert analysis and passionate discussions about our beloved Rays. Whether you're a diehard fan who vividly remembers Longo's Game 162 just like us... Or you remember the early Double Ray days of Wade Boggs and Carl Crawford. We're here to break down every play, every trade, and every milestone. In fact, this is our sixth season covering the Rays daily. In every season up till 2024 that we've uh, been doing the pod, they've gone to the playoffs. But you can still grab your favorite Rays gear, settle on in, and subscribe to our Locked on Rays YouTube channel and other podcast platforms. You can also find us on X and Instagram at Locked on Rays. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big, big, big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with a $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, on today's episode and... Tomorrow's episode, in fact, we're taking a little breather from the Tropicana Field dilemma and the player reviews as well. We actually have some hot stove action and some off the field news as well to get to over the next couple of days. But first and foremost, might as well hit on this and give our kudos and congratulations to one Brandon Lau who will be $10.5 million richer this upcoming season as his option was picked up by the Rays. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that he'll be playing 2025 or the entirety of the 2025 season with the Rays, but whether he is uh, playing with the Rays, with the Orioles, with the Athletics, or in uh, Shanghai, he's still going to get that money, so... Good for him as, uh, what, the longest tenured Ray presently and one of the more long tenured Rays in in history. Uh, we know this organization likes to rotate a lot of players in and out, but uh, Brandon Lau has been a, uh, a stagnant piece for this team going back to 2018. Yeah. And how quickly time moves, you know. He was the, the next big thing in 2018, and now he's... He's a veteran leader at 30 years old. It's pretty crazy that this is going to be his eighth season uh, with the team. If, obviously, like you said, he does make it out of the hot stove conversations without being traded. But, you know, I think every every player that spends so much time in one organization like he has since being drafted by the race in Maryland, uh, I really like this quote that he said in September uh, – People can people can always talk about the grass is always greener somewhere else, but it's pretty green right here. We're comfortable. We have a house here. My family's here. We're comfortable being here every day. We love the staff and love the people that are here. So if we're back, great. If not, then we'll find a way to get comfortable there, I guess. Hearing that, Kevin, is there some thought that if the Rays were to restructure his deal once it's over according to his injury history yes. but also giving him a fair deal if he's still productive do you think that that conversation would happen i think so i think it would make sense because what does he have on the docket in 2026 uh, a team option with some limited buyout i don't have the numbers right up in front of me but I think it would be uh, mutual for both parties to explore that. And it's not like it's something that has never been done before. So maybe getting an extra blanket or two of security after this year 
and for the next couple of years, I think would be important for him and his family in the organization, because you do make a good point. Um, when he's on the field, he is productive outside of the playoffs and the limited action that he's had there. But um, if you can just, man, I just want to see another full season from Brandon Lau. That's all yeah. I'm asking. Give is me. That Stu? Is that Stu? Is that Stu? Yeah, that was Stu pinging me right there. He's he's uh, he must be listening live and saying, oh, you know, that's a good idea. Something we have to. Okay. Consider. Maybe uh, might be a way to spread out the dollars over the next couple of years, as uh, the Rays have a lot to contend with on the financial revenue side of things. So I will. I'm, I'm all for that idea. Talking about financial, uh, the 2026 club option when he's 31 for 2026, it would be 11.5 million dollars. So one million more ex- dollar more expensive than than 2025. Uh, and there's a 500 thousand um, buyout. I I think if he puts up the same numbers as this season, 107 games played, 20 something bombs. Um, I don't see how, unless you're blocking, actively blocking someone that you want to see, I think it's, I think it's a very easy decision to say, yes, if he were to duplicate what he did and he's not blocking anybody. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. But as far as a restructured deal, are you of the mindset of, Hey, we'll give you something similar to what we gave Yandy Diaz like a three-year, $24, $25 million deal with an option in there and maybe some incentives. And ultimately, he has the capability or possibility to make more money, um, assuming he performs is on the field, but it's not going to be as big of a single-year hit as $11 million or $12 million or $13 million, whatever it is. Exactly. I mean, he's already made $32.5 million if yeah. that option next year doesn't get picked up. Um, so it's. I think he's a guy that would be a good candidate. Funny. It's not like, um, not saying you would be greedy, you want to make as much as you can, but if you're comfortable in a spot, you've got a good bank account, something tells me he's probably pretty conservative and down to earth with his money and he'll be able to make it last. And from what I understand, he didn't even really come from money. So I think. That is something, um, you know, maybe he he appreciates even more so. Um, I think that is something that the race should present and bring to him because, again, at your age, one bad injury happens in 2025, that option gets declined, and your options, not to use that word again, could be very, very limited. You could be fighting and clawing for an Ahmed Rosario type deal, for all I know. Now, I think probably low a little bit more than that because of the power component of things. But we see how there's many years that go by where we see a free agent and it's like, Oh, the race should target him or go after him. Or it's like, how is this guy not getting offered one way or the other? And I think the injuries have, you know, have a part to do with that along with the clubhouse dynamic. I think that Brandon Lau would be able to fit in wherever he goes. But um, I like that idea uh, to put it mildly. I want to get into the clubhouse a little bit. Um, But first, we have to tell the audience something very important. Guys, sometimes intimate moments happen spontaneously. All right? We all know this. I mean, but you don't want to boot that routine fly ball in center field. You don't want to, you know, chuck that throw to third or forget to cover first. You don't want to play Yankees defense with your intimate moments in life. So, Kevin, if you don't want to play Yankees defense with your intimate moments, what should they do? They should be going to hymns. Uh, that's probably what the Yankees should have been doing uh, throughout the course of the World Series as we saw the results of that. Uh, if you don't know by now, Hims is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. Hims provides access to a range of doctor-trusted ED treatments like chewable hard mints and Viagra and Cialis in their generics for up to 95% cheaper. 
It's crazy how they do it. Uh, the process is 100% online, so there's no need for uncomfortable doctor's visits. Nobody likes that. Just answer a series of questions on their site, and a medical provider will determine the right treatment option for you if prescribed. Your medication ships directly to you in discreet packaging for free. No insurance is needed, and one low price covers everything from treatments to ongoing care. With hundreds of thousands of trusted subscribers, Hims can help you find the ED option that works for you. So start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash locked on. That's H I M S dot com slash L O C K E D O N for your personalized ED treatment options. Hymns.com slash locked on. Plus, a little disclaimer here the products mentioned are chewable compounded products which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See their website for details and important safety information. Subscription is required and the price varies based on product and subscription plan. If you're feeling sore or you want to stay aligned, the joint is where you need to go. Why? Because they offer personalized care tailored to your needs. They will keep you moving and keep you feeling great. You have to take those times for yourself. And you can do that very easily at the joint because there are no scheduling hassles. You can just walk in and they are there for you. Or after work or in the weekends, in the evenings. They've got it all. So today, if you're a Rays fan and a Bucks fan, you're going to get a heck of a deal. $19 for your first visit. And you can get this offer by going to Buccaneers.com. You can check out the contest and promotion section under the fans tab and download that offer. Again, $19 for your first visit. Go get it, people. Head to thejoint.com to find your nearest Tampa area location today. So talking about veteran leadership, which we have talked about endlessly since, I don't think, three seasons, since Nelson Cruz left, basically. Yes. Uh, he would be that guy. Him and Yandy are those guys right now. Now, we don't know if Yandy and Bila will be traded, but now that we have this little piece of the puzzle saying, hey, they've picked up his option, which we all said that this would definitely happen, I... Uh, I would be very disappointed if both Brennan Lau and Yandy Diaz leave because, again, then there's a void right. of veteran leadership out there. And for those that don't think that that means anything, um, let's. I always do this because I feel like we need to ground it in reality. Look at your jobs. Are there people that can support you because they've been there, done that, and have seen the issues and troubles that you've never seen, and then you can go to them mm -hmm. with your questions. Same thing over there. I know we all only think it's baseball, so they just play baseball. But, like, there are so little, many little things that yeah. you have to learn. And if there's a guy that's been there, done that for eight seasons, it's it might be a good idea for those things to be – shared amongst a clubhouse that is usually kevin filled with young rookie guys yeah. you have to have a couple core pieces i think and having a guy like brandon Lau and like his counterpart yandy diaz who can go to these young players and not saying that you have to be the kevin kiermeyer life of the room but just having a conversation in the clubhouse uh bench to bench whatever it may be just hey i've gone through injuries this is how I dealt with it. Hey, I've gone through slumps. This is how I dealt with it. Hey, I've gone through um, rehab assignment. This is how I've gone through it. No, this is how you need to prepare day in and day out. Just even those guys that set the examples without even having to speak of they come in at this time, they leave at this time, they do these drills. This is how they get prepared game one to game 162. And this is how you have a guy that lasts eight, nine years in the league with one organization and gets a contract extension or, Hey, this is 
you might be approached with a contract extension. These are the types of things you need to consider. These are the types of things that I wish I would have known before I signed the contract extension. So there's so many things, just years and years of knowledge base that um, can't be replicated for one reason or another. No, and it doesn't have to be a five-time all-star who's made $300 million. It can just be Eric Hinsky yep. telling Evan Longoria, don't say no to your first millions. And then mm -hmm. that gets replicated up and down that line uh, where you know KK takes his advice, Chris Archer gets that, Blake Snell takes that. Like You need those examples out there. And, and it doesn't have to be, again, a guy that's made $300 million. Like that's awesome if you have that, because then that's another perspective an added perspective that you have, but it doesn't have to be that way. And Brennan Lau, you, you, we've mentioned eight years now going to be in the league. That's not an easy thing to do. And I, and I know that we can poke holes at Brennan Lau's um, uh, career. Um, the biggest two, negatives would be his playoff performance and then his injury um look his injury history it's still very difficult yes to to, to remain eight years isn't it like there's there's like an average uh i think MLB. probably the, the average major leaguer is you know two years three years something like that just like with the nfl it's like yeah two four years or some crazy numbers it's, it's very difficult it's it's a victory for MLB players when they get through those three full years and they can now have arbitration. Like, yeah. that is a big, big deal. And so that tells you three full years in the league is seen as very, very difficult. A yeah. guy that has eight can tell you a lot, even though he has those negatives. Yeah, think about how many guys that don't get to arbitration, that don't get to free agency. And I think uh, it might have been... Kevin Goldstein or somebody that we had on the show where it's, I don't want to say easy, but relatively easy to get called up. Numerous, numerous, numerous guys over the course of a year get an opportunity, get a cup of coffee, get a shot, maybe get an extended shot. But to have year in and year out of opportunities and being a household name and having your jersey sold, that's a whole different story. So, um, yeah, good for Brandon Lau. Uh, you mentioned the Yandi Diaz, Brandon Lau question, um, confidence level one to 10 opening day, 2025, that they'll both be in a raised uniform, 10 being hundred percent. It's going to happen. One, uh, something's afoot. A trade will be made for one of those. I'll tell you right after this, get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel. That is America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place those bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today you'll get started with 150 dollars in bonus bets if you win your first five dollar bet that's fanduel.com never waste a hunch and make every moment more with fanduel an official sportsbook partner of the nfl let's go with six with okay. a six i'm 60 percent sure that brandon lau and yandy diaz are coming back because okay. and the biggest excuse I have to say that it's I don't see how you get better for 2025 right. without trade without these two guys. Like there's just no way unless they're thinking of punting in 2025, which is yeah, very, very likely uh, or not very likely, but it is a, a a scenario where that could happen. And if they do that, then, yeah, OK, they're gone. But if they're not planning on just playing for 2026 i don't see how you 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 cannot get this offense better for 2025 without yandy ds and brandon Lau. because if you've traded them he, <laughs> the trade would have to be a highway robbery right for that to work yeah and i guess so it really it comes down to financial obligations and considerations and in that case uh Jeffrey Springs may be 
packing his bags. Zach Littell may be packing his bags for all we know. And I guess you could also, as Brandon Lau gets older, Yandy Diaz gets older, you, um, while we need the offense, the Rays do like to focus on defense and flexibility and versatility. And it seems like low might start to get pigeonholed, maybe not this year, but it, it seems at some point he will get pigeonholed into a first base DH type guy. And Yandy Diaz already is first base DH and maybe moving on down to DH only guy. And you have um, 40 man considerations to, to bring about with that as well. Maybe not this year, but the next couple of years. And they both have really good splits against uh, their counterparts. So Yandy Diaz destroys lefties. Brendan Lau destroys righties. So in your head, you could be like, okay, I could see a platoon developing there. But due to the financial constraints that you're talking about, would you really be willing to put $20 million on a platoon? Um, Not the Rays usually. Not the Rays usually. um, If they want to provide more offense and have that, Sure, but that it's just going to be really interesting to see how they move around the, those pieces. But um, those that wasn't the the only piece of news that we had. Uh, yeah. Oh, one other question I do have. Another uh, one to oh. tenor, uh, if okay. you will. Um, or actually, it's it's a little bit different. But if if you can only keep one of those guys, Ooh. if Stu Sternberg comes down the pipe to you, Ulysses slash Eric, and says, "Okay, uh, I don't care how you do it, but you got." You got to get rid of one of these salaries. Um, I guess for you, if you're Neander, who would you rather have on the roster in 2025? Lau or Yandi? Uh, it's tough because I need the power for next yeah. year, and Brandon Lau gives me that. I also need guys that don't strike out, and Yandi Diaz gives me that. I, I, a different look. Um that's, that's really a tough rough. question. Yeah, it's a tough question. Um, well, you know what? Let's 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 get people to put it on the on the comments. Which one yeah. do you prefer? You know, Yandy Diaz just played 140 plus games. Well, well Brennan now has only that, played triple digits in two and a half of his seasons, three seasons. I think that could be if it comes down to that, not saying it will, but if it does, that might be the difference maker, considering that yeah. Yandy since 2021. You know, mm-hmm. we'll throw 2020 out the window, 134, 137, 137, 145. Now this was his, you know, lowest season basically by war, um, even with 2021, but still uh, you, you need a guy like that in the lineup for sure. Yes. And maybe the Rays are saying, we really are bullish on Chris Morrell, giving us, this, uh, giving us some pop. We'll get more pop from Cam and Arrow, and then we'll find another alternate venue for, for power from there as well so it it you might as, as difficult as it is to say yandy diaz might be more of the known quantity as far as what you're going to get and how many games you're going to get from him as well so just want to throw yeah. that out there um as far as other moves uh real quickly in the raised pipeline uh shane mcclanahan was reinstated from the 60 day injured list uh right-handed pitcher jacob walkis was also reinstated from the 60-day IL and agreed to a new deal. Uh, not necessarily the heavy-hitting deal that um, we're, we're wanting later on in this offseason, but good for him. He gets $1.3 million for 2025 and a $1.5 million team option for 2026 uh, with the race. He didn't have a lot of action this past season and was so-so in that limited action based on the numbers, but... Uh, this tells me that the Rays see something in him based on the fact that he is six foot six and 235 pounds, gets a ton of extension, has a repertoire of essentially four different pitches, can ramp the fastball up top of the zone at 96 miles per hour, and he gets uh, a lot of foolish swings on the cutter of his. And I think that even at what he's uh, 31 uh, now that um, him being uh, pitching overseas the last couple of years and coming back to the States, the Rays maybe see some some untapped potential there uh, that some organizations may not uh, observe. Well, first, let's say happy birthday because it's November 5th and that's his birthday. So happy that. birthday. 
to Jacob Wagusback. What a way. I mean, he's buying dinner tomorrow or today. 100%. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's good, Jacob. Uh, happy birthday. When you say untapped potential, can I be the first in race fandom to say this? If, yes. If anybody has, hasn't said that already. Uh, Jacob Wagusback could be the race newest Drew Rasmussen, Jeffrey Springs, and um, Zach Littell experiment. Okay, I like it. Hey, we didn't know anything about Zach Littell. Uh, other guys were left for dead. DFA candidates. So you don't this do this. You don't do this unless you have a plan. The race. Why? Why would you even put yourself in this situation with Jacob Wagus back? Yeah. Uh, you could easily just. TFA the man, release the guy. Like, there's no need to do these steps. Yeah. Uh, if you do these steps, it's because you have a plan with this guy, and he likes that plan, and that's why he also signed it. Uh, so I don't know, just putting it out there. No, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because you ask, I think, any average race fan, and Jacob Wagaspak doesn't bring uh, butterflies and rainbows to you. Just think of him as the rest of the guys that he very well could have. Uh, clear waivers and been claimed off waivers like a yep. Joey Cunell who that happened to him or a Justin Sterner as well. But um, yep. yes, this is a guy to keep an eye on for 2025. Uh, assuming he's able to stay healthy, you get Kyle Snyder and his long lengthy wingspan working with him a little bit. And uh, we might, we might see something special from him, be it as a starter, a reliever, a bulk man, a swing man, whatever it may be, he could be uh, that next dude that that turns out to uh, give pretty good things. And then one other note here, uh, Rene Pinto, no longer a Ray as he was claimed off waivers by the Orioles. Um, I would think that that's a great place for him to land and maybe learn and uh, rub shoulders with a pretty good catcher that they got over there in Adley Rushman. So, um, you know, I'm, I guess I'm rooting for Rene Pinto. I, I hope, well, it's weird because as a Rays fan, you you kind of see the writing on the wall maybe that he goes somewhere else and, yep. and kills it for the next six years. But I, I guess, let me frame it like this. I'm curious to see where the Rene Pinto experiment winds up over the next couple of years, if the Orioles Same. are able to uh, whip him into shape, so to speak. And maybe it's just a change of scenery thing. Um, sometimes that happens and uh, fresh faces fresh voice, fresh messaging. Uh, you deal with some failure. You didn't do exactly what you were supposed to do. And you learn from that, figure it out, and uh, maximize your potential and become the player that you were projected to be. So, And then now that just means that the countdown is on for Mark Topkin's fantastic chapter to be written on the Rene Pinto yes. uh, story. So yes, we'll, we'll, we'll wait for that. Yeah. All right. Um, in the meantime, hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe. And we will talk to you tomorrow.